In this lesson, we're going to look at the different cranial nerves and their functions. So remember, the cranial nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. They extend off of the base of the brain, as you can see here, and they supply the head, neck, and shoulders. Now, these nerves could either be sensory, meaning that their purpose is to receive signals and bring them back to the brain for interpretation, or motor, meaning that they help to produce some sort of action, or they could have both sensory and motor pathways, which in which case we call them mixed. Now there's 12 cranial nerves that you need to know, and you need to know which number they are. In order, they are olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. O, 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 T, T, A, F, V, G, V, A, H. There's quite a few mnemonics out there to help you, but my favorite is O, 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 to touch and feel very good velvet. Ah, so we've attached a few of these mnemonics to this lesson so you can review, basically find the one that works for you so that you can remember what order these go in. Now, I'm going to run quickly through each one of these and what their functions are. If you want to see details and demonstrations on how to assess each one, make sure that you check out the health assessment course. First is olfactory. Olfactory is a sensory nerve and its main function is smell. So usually what we'll do is test by having the patient identify a common smell like an alcohol pad. Cranial nerve two is the optic nerve. It is also sensory and it is for vision. So this is the nerve that takes what we see and sends that signal to the brain so we can understand it. So we'll usually test this with a visual acuity chart um, like a Snellen chart. Cranial nerve three is oculomotor. It is what moves the internal muscles of the eye. So that's things like the pupil and the lens, and that actually helps us to make sure we can focus. So we'll test it by shining a light in the eyes to see if the pupil constricts like it should. Now, I've grouped cranial nerves four and six together because they have the same function. They are both motor. The trochlear and abducens nerves are responsible for extrinsic eye movement. So that means our ability to move our eyes around in our head. So we test it by having the patient follow our finger and see if they can do that with smooth coordinated movements. Now cranial nerve five is the trigeminal nerve. It is mixed, it's both sensory and motor. It's responsible for sensation in the head, neck, and gums, as well as motor movement for things like chewing and swallowing. So I'll test this by palpating the face to make sure that it feels the same to the patient on both sides, and then by having the patient clench their teeth together to feel the muscles on their jaw to make sure that it's even on both sides. Cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve. It's also mixed, and as you could probably guess, it has to do with the face. So in terms of sensory, it has parts of the taste buds involved, and then the motor is all of our facial movements. So what we'll do is have the patient make a bunch of different faces and make sure that everything moves symmetrically. Cranial nerve eight is vestibulocochlear. It, it's sensory and it has two branches. The vestibular branch helps with our balance and things like that. And the cochlear or auditory branch helps with our hearing. Now you can test this in quite a few ways, including tests with tuning forks like the Weber and Rennie tests. You can see more detail about how to test this nerve in the EENT assessment in the health assessment course. Next is cranial nerve nine. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It is also mixed with some sensory and some motor. The sensory is part of your taste buds and the motor is movements involved with swallowing. So we can see if the patient can swallow safely without coughing or choking. Cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve. Now the sensations and motor effects of the vagus nerves are mostly internal. So there aren't really solid ways to test it. It does have some motor innervation in the pharynx on the back of the throat. So you can actually test by seeing the uvula rise when the patient says, ah, but the rest is internal. So the vagus nerve senses changes in blood pressure or uh, as well as gets sensation from internal organs like in the digestive system. And in terms of motor responses, again, it's internal. So we'll see changes in the heart rate from the SA node. Um, effects on our digestive system in terms of peristalsis. So the vagus nerve has actually a huge impact 
on the internal workings of our body. Almost there. Number 11 is the accessory nerve. It provides a motor supply to the neck and shoulders. So it's all about movement of the neck and shoulders. So we can have the patient shrug their shoulders or turn their head side to side against resistance. Last one, cranial nerve 12. It's the hypoglossal nerve. It is also motor and it involves movement of the tongue. So you can have them stick their tongue out, move it side to side, and just make sure all that movement is symmetrical and smooth. Okay, let's recap. The cranial nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system and they help to supply the head, neck, and shoulders. They are either sensory, motor, or both depending on their purpose and there are 12 of them. Make sure that you come up with a mnemonic that works best for you. I like OOO to touch and feel very good velvet. Ah, They each have specific functions and specific ways to assess them. So make sure that you check out the health assessment course for how to do that. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.